Stefan. Now I would like uh, to give the floor to Oksana Danilevska. She is a PhD in philo philology. She is uh, the uh, senior um, a senior researcher in uh, the uh, Department of uh, Stylistics and Different Language. Uh, she specializes in uh, the uh, language behavior of uh, the uh, students. Uh, and uh, today uh, she will dwell upon rethinking of the language behavior of uh, teachers uh, in the context of the war in Ukraine. I think that this is the continuation, the logical continuation of the previous presentation. Thank you very much, Svetlana, for giving me the floor. And actually, it's uh, quite emblematic uh, that uh, we have uh, two presentations today that are dedicated to, to the topic of education since September is the month of uh, the beginning of uh, educational year in uh, many educational facilities. And this is the second year in a row that we are living under full-scale war that seemed to be impossible. But currently, we have to face these uh, challenges that require deliberation and reflection on the part of the researchers. If you don't mind, I would like to start sharing my screen now. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your presentation. In order to give you the background information, I would like to quote uh, and Ukraine, Ukrainian res, Ukraine language researcher Oras Tkachenko, who was uh, looking into a postcolonial uh, story of Ukrainian language. Among uh, the um, conscious intelligentsia, there are two categories that are close to people and uh, that uh, could create connections uh, between people and uh, the elite, uh, teachers and uh, preachers. Uh, the uh, linguist uh, was uh, looking into the uh, the role of uh, these uh, two categories in the uh, colonial and post-colonial development uh, of the language. And uh, he said uh, that uh, this kind of connection could be created only when uh, the uh, only when they are uh, trying uh, to incite uh, the. Um, in, in inside uh, the independent views are the educators uh, the upbringers of uh, the consciousness uh, or are they simply the conformists i hope that my presentation uh, would uh, encourage you into finding uh, the answers to these questions somehow i'm having issues with uh, changing my slides you could use the keyboard. Well, that was exactly what I was doing. It worked before. Among different uh, phenomena of uh, Ukrainian uh, linguistic sphere, sociolinguists are paying attention to the language situation as it is uh, the way to meet the communication needs uh, by means of one language or a number of languages is a dynamic essence uh, that the configuration of which is uh, determined uh, by a set of uh, various uh, parameters. During a year and a half of the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation, Ukrainian society changed a lot. And these changes were taking place in non-stop with the participation of millions of people. Therefore, we all could agree that uh, the uh, language issue is uh, uh, not uh, just uh, the discretional issue that is uh, created uh, to create to set the divide uh, between the supporters of various political parties. In the beginning of the 21st century, due to uh, the and due to the uh, uh, ideas of sociolinguists, uh, there, there is an attempt uh, to 
to track uh, the uh, change in uh, these processes in Ukraine, and researchers are taking to look closer at the change of uh, the role of the Ukrainian language. The language issue throughout the whole history of Ukraine's independence was uh, considered uh, far-fetched, was considered of, uh, of low importance. For instance, in uh, 2007, the, the and there was uh, the research conducted according to which uh, the language issues uh, are of uh, small importance. Uh, the, they are of importance only to 10, 20 percent of the population. Alexander Vishnyak, a sociologist, uh, was uh, looking into the uh, language situation by means of the, uh, so the social, uh, socialist uh, so sorry, so uh, sociological tools. In a, taking into consideration the trends uh, that uh, were setting uh, the lives of uh, the people in Ukraine and the use of languages, uh, and the uh, sociolinguists were not taking into great consideration uh, uh, these trends. And before the uh, full-scale invasion, uh, the indecisiveness of uh, the independent Ukraine in terms of uh, the uh, language preferences, uh, the oligarchs uh, were benefiting from that, and uh, they were basically hiding this information from the society. And it came to the fore in 2013-2014. And uh, in the event of a full-scale war, it came to the fore and became evident. Uh, the true polit political cho choice and uh, is uh, the um, topic of many debates and uh, the uh, and those in power might uh, be accountable for this dire situation in Ukraine. Let me quote uh, Vitaly Portnikov. I believe that people who with their political uh, position were trying to lead Ukrainians astray have the moral accountability and responsibility um, to those uh, Ukrainians who trusted them. But we say that uh, this is the language renaissance, uh, the situation with the Ukrainian language in Ukraine. Well, actually, that would depend on uh, the dynamic uh, um, of the language situation in Ukraine. The communicative reinforcement of uh, the Ukrainian language in official and semi-official communication, uh, the use of Ukrainian in day-to-day uh, -day communication, the change in uh, the uh, language situation uh, from inside active uh, behavior of the citizens uh, and uh, the change of uh, the community. Another trend, uh, summarizing it, I called it local shifts, uh, the change of uh, the quantitative parameters of uh, the uh, language uh, manifestations uh, due to the war actions. Besides, uh, there is uh, the extension of uh, the spheres where the Ukrainian language is used as now it is used in informal communication as well, in the army, in other places as well. And uh, you, the Ukrainian language strengthens its, its uh, status in all spheres of communication. The status of the language has changed as now this is the language of communication. Uh, the, Russian language lost uh, its uh, status of uh, the language of the prestigious language. Uh, there is a higher number of uh, parents who do not want their children to study Russian. Ukrainian language is uh, now used as uh, the main tool of uh, decolonizing uh, the uh, mindset of uh, Ukrainians, uh, especially in terms of uh, the historic retrospective uh, comprehension of uh, the use of the Russian language in terms of the uh, creating the divide uh, between uh, the Ukrainian society in the times of independence of Ukraine. We see that the Ukrainian language has got another function that it is using right now. We observe uh, the increase in number of uh, civic initiatives uh, dedicated to, to creating the Ukrainian speaking community and uh, new policies in the educational sphere, the language activism. 
there has been the transformation of uh, the perception of Surjik, uh, the mix of Ukrainian and Russian language, uh, is uh, considered uh, now as uh, the normal uh, phenomenon. Uh, and uh, this uh, is explained as uh, the addition of a new axiological feature uh, of uh, Ukrainian to Ukrainian language and uh, the use of uh, the idiomatic expressions that have not been used uh, before. Ukrainian language is uh, now extending its geography. These trends uh, go beyond the sphere of uh, school education, but uh, the language interaction inside the school is uh, defined by the processes that take place in the society at large. Therefore, we have uh, to outline these trends in order to understand better what is actually happening in uh, the education system with the languages. Apart from that, uh, under the war times, uh, the uh, research methods uh, have uh, been changed as now those that are allowing us uh, to uh, re record uh, and register the personal experience uh, come to the fore. This trends uh, set uh, the new perception of uh, the analysis uh, of uh, the language phenomena. Since uh, they change uh, the post-colonial uh, deformations uh, that uh, caused uh, Ukra Ukrainian language uh, teaching uh, the viewed as uh, the post-colonial phenomenon and uh, attributing uh, to diglossia. As in uh, many schools, uh, the, uh, in the many schools, the Russian language was used, uh, even though uh, the um, Ukrainian language was uh, declared uh, to be the uh, language of uh, teaching and communication at school. I used uh, the uh, results of a number of sociological uh, studies. Uh, as the background and baseline information for my study. Besides, I used the recordings of the interviews as well as the public publications from open sources. Let us uh, start with the trend that I have outlined as communicative strengthening of Ukrainian language. On this slide, you can see the main source, uh, which is the results of a sociological survey carried out by uh, Ilka Kucherov uh, Democratic Initiative Foundation in uh, December 2022. According to the survey in Ukraine, in the course of the year, the share of the citizens using Ukraine in everyday life has increased. In 2021, this was 64%. In 2022, it reached 71%. Over a year, the um, number of those who consider Ukrainian their mother tongue has also increased. And you can see this uh, on this uh, bar graph. Also, during the year 2022-2023, lots of new social society organizations uh, have appeared or the ones that existed before became even more active. And they are building uh, conversational clubs, uh, Ukrainian language courses, uh, purchasing books for the libraries in Ukrainian language. Here are just a few examples of such. The change of the quantitative parameters at the regional level, the so-called local shifts, uh, the result of large-scale migration caused by the war, demonstrated by the numbers that are collected as a result of mass representative research, which uh, were difficult to carry out due to the armed hostilities. That is why the reliability of data based on which you can make uh, conclusions uh, on the language shifts uh, is still very limited. A study by the Democratic Initiatives Foundation shows a certain decrease in the importance of the Russian language in the south and east of the country. Well, you can see that communicative positions of the Russian language especially became weaker in the central part of the country. Now it's 16.7 percent. And if we're talking about year 2017, it was about 30 percent. 
In the beginning of the large scale war, we also can observe the expansion of communicative spheres of using the state language, which became a unofficial language of informal communication in many domains. As a result of the survey of Kiev International uh, Sociology uh, Institute, uh, 80% of the polls think that Ukrainian language should be the main language in all domains, and only 9% uh, still say that Russian language matters for Ukraine. Now, speaking about strengthening the communicative capacity of the Ukrainian languages in the beginning of the large-scale war, it is also mentioned by the respondents when their language biographies were recorded, and I picked uh, an abstract from the Russian-speaking Ukrainian individual who believes that in one, two years, uh, there will be no Russian speakers in Kyiv at all, that everybody will switch to Ukrainian. And of course, this shows uh, the so-called symbolical refusal or a symbolical declaration, uh, the symbolical affinity, but this kind of trends uh, should be taken into account to forecast and predict the development of language situation in the future. We can also see the change in the language that is used on the internet. This was yet another domain where Ukrainian language uh, had to be fa uh, ha was faced with lots of resistance. Uh, but now we see that uh, 26% of the respondents are using exclusively Ukrainian. Another 26% mostly use Ukrainian. If we compare it to 2017, there were 11 and 12% of such relevant. 38% use both languages equally, and only 4% use Russian, and 3 use only Russian. And uh, here is this excerpt from the language biography where you can see the motivation, why this is happening. And uh, the motivation is economical. It relates to income from commercial activities, uh, as it is mentioned uh, by the uh, respondent. Nobody will buy whatever you're selling if you continue using Russian language rather than communicating in Ukrainian. Also, let us take a look at the armed forces. The volunteers uh, all the time informally communicate with the soldiers. And here is an excerpt from the language biography that mentions uh, that the change also happened in the armed forces. Uh, in the beginning, you probably remember the discussions, there were lots of uh, comments about people using Russian language in the army and that this language is legitimized in Ukraine. After one year of war, the army mostly speaks Ukrainian, according to the polls and service, uh, and they did that without being forced. The situation basically induced them to do that because uh, uh, Ukrainian language allows you to identify your own people. So it is used at the identity market. The change in the status of the languages that basically changes Ukrainian into the language of international communication, those of prestigious Russian language, and evaluating languages uh, for Ukrainians who do not want their children to uh, ever learn Russian again, can also be traded if we compare the results of the mass service uh, in the course of a year of the full-scale invasion and pre-war period. According to the mass survey that was carried out by Volkswagen Foundation in February 2017, because I've already mentioned that a few times, uh, the number of those who thought that the Russian language should be learned uh, mandatorily has decreased uh, by more than one third, if we compare the data of 2017 against the data of the Southern Six. So there were 90% of such people in 2006. In 2017, there is 56% of such people. If we're talking 
if we're talking about today, present day, according to the survey uh, of uh, KIIS, uh, over 50% believe that there is no need to learn Russian in schools at all. And here's one more interesting fact about the methodology of service uh, that were carried out in Ukraine. Before full-scale invasion, uh, speaking about the service, nobody ever suggested an option of Russian language to be excluded completely. Nobody even suggested this option. And clearly, the percentage of uh, those supporting it was pretty high. And it was impossible to even measure what people thought about the option not learning it at all. And at the same time, we see a large increase of people who think that Russian language is not important at all, which is 58% uh, as opposed to 2014 when we had only 9%. Another thing that changed is motivation. There is an explanation why this language matters. And now, According to the survey from 2022, even among those who think that Russian language still is important in Ukraine, they explain it uh, that this is a language that uh, almost everybody understands in Ukraine. That's why it is important. And this is a language uh, that uh, people speak mostly in Eastern regions. 14% uh, of respondents uh, picked this. In 2014, 59% uh, mentioned how important Russian language is in Ukraine, they justified it in the following way. They said that this is a language in which they learned uh, uh, literature, global literature, as well as artworks, business, and scientific 10%. So 35% total were mentioning Russian language as the medium to learn about culture. So today only 10% of such respondents are there. And Ukrainians who back in 2017 supported mandatory learning uh, Russian after Ukrainian and English were more than 50% of the respondents. Presently, according to the Democratic uh, Initiatives Foundation, 38% of the respondents uh, said that Russian authors should not be included into school curriculums in Ukraine. So they started the shift. These are the changes that are happening. And this change in uh, the society and people's minds uh, also impacted the change of the legislation that uh, regulates school education. For example, there were serious amendments in uh, world literature, basically Russian uh, authors, uh, Russian classics was removed as was Russian language has been removed uh, from the curriculum upon the decision of uh, local government authorities. Uh, and uh, the society now believes that Ukrainian language is the main means of decolonization. That is why we can talk about expanding the function of the language and strengthening language uh, um, as to strengthen the society. And here I would like to draw your attention to the interim results of a survey that was carried out uh, by the Stylistics and Social Linguistics of the Institute of Ukrainian Language. The survey is still ongoing. That is why these are interim results. So uh, presently 64% of respondents, uh, and uh, uh, this is a survey of educators, 64% uh, have mentioned that their attitude to the language issue has changed. And 64%, as you can see on the slide, 64 said, why did this attitude change and how did it change? These people believe that language issue forms the part of national security. And uh, there is a stronger language activism. There are different movements uh, that uh, I have already mentioned earlier on. And I would like to draw your attention to an initiative uh, by Spilnomova. And uh, it was supported by the Kiev uh, City Council in terms of uh, using Ukrainian language in all live domains in the city of Kiev. Uh, 
from 2023 until 2025. During the war, we can also see the transformation with the attitude towards Surzhik, which is a mixture of Russian and Ukrainian. Pre predominantly was considered something negative, but presently it is treated as something quite positive. And on this slide, you can see an opinion expressed by Rostislav uh, Samkiv, uh, a literature uh, scholar. He mentions that too. And a few excerpts from the language biographies that were recorded in Kyiv in 2023. People here also mention that presently they like Surzhik, that uh, they uh, are more chill about Surzhik. So we also see the change in the axiological core uh, indicator and uh, the interaction of languages in Ukraine also shows uh, the uh, difference between the volume of the shift that we're talking about and the level of uh, their scientific perception. The depth of the language transformation in Ukraine sometimes is hard to uh, show in uh, numbers because uh, all of the necessary measurements have not yet been done. Sociological services cannot do that both for subjective and objective reasons because the change is happening on a monthly basis. Secondly, qualitative, qualitative change is also happening as a result of attitude in people's minds and how it is manifested in language behavior. And they run faster than the quality because usually people are refusing from the Russian language symbolically, which yet again highlights one of the conceptual baselines. Any phenomenon requires using qualitative, quantitative um, parameters and assessment. And the language situation clearly is such multi-layered, multi-aspect phenomenon. A given dynamic processes of language interaction, the relevant thing is uh, to go through the language biographies as one of the methods that can help you Look at the situation in educators. Uh, the languages in school education is one of the components uh, is uh, the area of the uh, language domain, which oftentimes uh, became uh, the subject for tendencies, assessment, and even though it was visible, uh, there oftentimes were very limited opportunities to study due to institutional uh, closure of the education system and analyzing the peculiarities of using languages in Ukrainian schools at the beginning of 21st century, the results of which are mentioned in uh, this um, monography, which you can see on the slide now, uh, was mentioned in language situation in Ukrainian school education was defined as uh, the state of function of Ukrainian language and languages of minorities to satisfy Communication is in the education process. The analysis of informal manifestations of uh, language situation has demonstrated that to analyze it is not enough to only show uh, the quality because it doesn't take it into account when language or languages are used outside the school during the recess, uh, after class, uh, uh, during informal communication between the teachers, students, teachers and parents, parents and students, and what is the language behavior of students uh, during uh, the lessons and what quality of their language skill is. Uh, moreover, quality does not always take into account what uh, ordinary speakers think about languages used in schools and what matters even more how this impacts the language situation and education. The need in using the comprehensive approach and studying language situation in education is justified by um, um, the uh, official statistics uh, of what is happening in the national school and the qualitative characteristics of the language situation in schools. And even though formally the schools are switched to Ukrainian uh, language uh, education after 1991 was happening pretty rapidly. Well, when the independence was um, declared, the number of students who 
studied in Ukrainian was 49%. In the early 2000s, it was over 70%. And as of today, it's 100%. This are the official statistics. At the same time, everybody knows, and we don't have to convince you about it, that uh, synchronization of uh, the language did not happen all across the country. Also, did not become the efficient uh, uh, method to, to change the language situation in the state. And this explains the difference between the statistic data about the number of the students who are learning in Ukrainian as well as using it in education. And on this bar graph, you can see how it correlates uh, for different regions, the number of students that are covered by Ukraine is the language of instruction schools in blue and uh, how the speakers uh, mention the quality of the language environment in schools in the West, almost 100% were covered by Ukrainian language in schools and parents, students, ordinary people who know about school education. They all said that the school environment is almost 100% Ukrainian language. In the South, we can say that over 80% are children that uh, are learning Ukrainian, but only 49% hear it. And of course, it's also subject. Take a look at the situation and the way it changed right now. Currently, we observe that um, these schools are covered by the Ukrainian language at 100%. As the model has changed and we see the gradual increase in the number of Ukrainian language classes. And uh, we see that the situation in the school uh, based on the information obtained uh, from one of uh, the students who studied uh, at the school in Kiev uh, has not completely changed. Therefore, there is uh, the discrepancy between uh, the uh, language policy, the official language policy, and uh, the actual language situation. Therefore, we have used uh, the uh, language biography method. Uh, let's uh, first and foremost uh, talk about uh, the terminology of the language biography. Analyzing the peculiarities of the language and language behavior of a certain person or of a social group, the researchers base their studies. I'm sorry, just, just a second. Base their studies on the use of a number of uh, similar terminology, similar terms, uh, language biography, language profile, language or communicative passport of a person, language behavior. And uh, we may say that uh, in the Ukrainian language studies, uh, we are using the language biography term in uh, which uh, means uh, the uh, use, uh, the description of uh, the use of certain language by a certain person taking into consideration his or her language uh, references. Uh, therefore, the uh, language uh, biography is a method uh, to interpret and to analyze uh, the, uh, inf the language behavior of a certain uh, person. Within the macro studies, uh, the language uh, biographies are used uh, to collect information to analyze the language uh, situation in Ukraine. The language uh, bi biography uh, reminds us of the method of in-depth interviews. In fact, uh, the language biography envisages uh, the in-depth interviews uh, being recorded with the questions that are aimed at the peculiarities of uh, the uh, language teaching or language learning, uh, the language hierarchy, the peculiarities of the behavior of a certain person in terms of uh, the choice of language, the attitude to the, lang to the language and to the official po language policies. Since uh, this kind of information is collected in personal communication, 
we use also the empiric material and uh, it helps us in terms of uh, tracking the extra lingual factors in the factors that influence the language choice and language behavior. It creates uh, the language profile of a person within a certain historical uh, period. And uh, speaking of uh, this method, uh, we could compare them to the method of uh, uh, used in history and uh, the methods of uh, storytelling. We took a uh, special we paid special attention to the uh, language biographies of the teachers as it, uh, it outlines uh, the the atmosphere the language atmosphere within a certain certain educational uh, facility i have already quoted but i would uh, like uh, to keep on quoting uh, the language biographies of uh, a couple of teachers uh, but i would like to be concise uh, so you will be able to uh, look uh, into detailed information to my paper but i would like to say that uh, we selected uh, the and the respondents uh, of older of age as uh, their language biographies uh, contain the information about uh, the language policy under the time of the Soviet Union as well as uh, the current day situation. Besides, we had an opportunity to analyze the change of the language behavior in uh, their personal life and in their career, if uh, any. The uh, language biographies of uh, the teachers uh, contain a lot of information in terms of the changes in the, the educational, educational uh, processes in Ukraine. For instance, uh, our informant told us uh, how in the Ukrainian police uh, the Russian language was introduced. Uh, we could find out uh, when it became of importance uh, as it turned out uh, basically until the end of 1960s. Uh, all uh, people residing in that uh, village were speaking Ukrainian and all uh, teachers were Ukrainian speaking and even uh, the teacher of the Russian language was using the Ukrainian language at home. This is uh, um, the situation in uh, the uh, Kiev region and uh, it was uh, quite on the contrary in the city of Kiev where the teachers were Russian speaking. A similar situation is uh, in Zhitomir, as uh, here we learn that uh, there is a certain conflict uh, between uh, the respondent and uh, between uh, the teacher of the Russian language. Uh, she explains uh, the details of this conflict in the, her language biography. You will be able uh, to go through the details of this communication. Republican Physical and Mathematical School was uh, also Ukraine, Ukrainian speaking, and it was at the beginning of 1970s. Besides uh, studying at the uh, Zhitomir Institute, those who studied in Zhitomir Institute at the, that point in time uh, also found uh, out uh, that uh, this institute was uh, Ukrainian speaking. But uh, in the second year of study, our respondent uh, was transferred to Kiev uh, University and it all was uh, Russian speaking. We see that uh, the situation was contradictory in the 1980s in Kiev in terms of the use of languages uh, in educational institutions. We have the information that uh, um, we have uh, this uh, language biographies uh, that uh, show us that there were some conflicts. And actually, uh, we have this information only from the words of our respondents uh, since official sociology was uh, never looking into this data. Only recently, a Ukrainian sociolinguist started paying attention uh, to this period uh, and uh, to this method uh, because uh, before the Ukrainian uh, ling linguistic sociologists uh, have not seen any uh, conflict. And uh, this assimilation, according to one linguist, uh, caused uh, the lack of interest in uh, the part of uh, the researchers uh, 
of the Ukrainian and the Russian language. And the opposition between our and their language caused the idealization of the ling linguistic situation. And we underestimated uh, the importance of having two languages in the territory of Ukraine. Ukrainian sociologists 10 years ago drew the conclusions of, of the unique features of uh, the language situation in Ukraine. 98% of ethnic Ukrainians or Ukrainian-speaking population understand Russian-speaking people and vice versa. Currently, we may say that uh, it was uh, either other statement uh, of uh, the source of conflict or the lack of desire to see the source of conflict and the divide. Therefore, these language biographies allow us uh, to see the source of the conflict. And while preparing this paper, I came across uh, the article on BBC Ukraine. There was an article on why Ukraine, those who were speaking Ukrainian originally, switched to the Russian language. What was uh, their incentive in the 1980s, 1990s? They explained uh, why they have chosen to change uh, languages. Uh, Therefore, language biographies uh, come handy also from this point of view. Language biographies of the teachers help us in understanding the discrepancies uh, between uh, the quantitative and qualitative uh, indicators that were offered by sociologists in the times of Ukraine, since the time of Ukraine's independence. They help us to understand uh, what was actually halting the process of instilling Ukrainian language as uh, the language of uh, teaching at schools and informal communication. Now we, we could uh, look into uh, who was uh, behind uh, uh, stonewalling the process. His uh, language biographies uh, help us in understanding why Ukrainian language has not been reinforced as uh, the official language right after the independence and why it didn't change the situation much. Sociologists uh, said that the processes of uh, de-Ukrainization de and Russification could not be stopped neither by uh, proclaiming uh, the Ukrainian language the only uh, language uh, of uh, the Ukrainian Republic, uh, neither the uh, Ukrainization of uh, the educational sphere and uh, system. And it, it was their opinion in uh, the first decade of uh, the 21st century. These uh, processes were even accelerated. The language biographies also show us that uh, there were no practical steps uh, taken in terms of uh, the in terms of uh, the use of the Ukrainian language uh, in at home due to the fact that, that there were no official instructions and additional guidelines uh, for the teachers. Uh, the teachers, while talking to parents, uh, were switching to the language of the parents. Therefore, the language environment was not very stable. It was changing all the time, and it is uh, difficult uh, to, to determine whether the school is Ukrainian or Russian uh, speaking based on the documents only. We see that uh, the there is the change in the quality of uh, the language uh, used by the teachers as uh, the uh, language biographies uh, provide for the opportunity to look into the in-depth uh, interviews and uh, we could draw the conclusions in terms of uh, what could be improved in uh, the, as the language skills. Therefore, the uh, language biography in the context of current political situation is a dynamic component of our language situation, which shows the real situation. On the other hand, it also manifests the trends and tendencies that outline the development of language interactions in the state, constant monitoring of the level of uh, 
dependency of the situation uh, with schools and everyday con conversation language allows you to expand their set of criteria to analyze the real functioning of languages in the education system and deepen in the understanding in the language society system to come up with the scientifically justified mechanisms uh, as a language environment is uh, the environment where the language functions uh, and uh, an important tool for uh, looking into language situation and education is language biographies which is a method that allows you to use qualitative and quantitative approach together in a comprehensive way which is also uh, very important during war activation of migration processes uh, which substitute standard methods and uh, last but not the least i'd like to mention that this report is based on materials uh, that were collected preliminary but uh, the opportunity to, to participate in the projects allows me to outline what i would like to do while working uh, in the framework of this project uh, and i have outlined four tasks for myself and i hope that i will be able to implement all of them and i'll be able to improve the understanding of the change of language situation in school education domain thank you for your attention and i will be happy to respond to your question Thank you so much, uh, Oksana, for such an interesting presentation. Colleagues, now is your time to jump in. Alexandra, over to you. Hello, colleagues. Today is the start of our presentations, and uh, they are unbelievably interesting. I'd like to thank Mahalo, and I'd like to thank Oksana, too. And I do agree with you. Uh, regarding the fact that language that uh, language is the component of national security we all feel that directly i have a cross-disciplinary question for you and also a suggestion for you let me give you a quick example of in the word short on time I had an honor in 2013 through 2020 to be the head of the economic sciences of Kiev Mohila Academy. So basically, I have background in economy, but language as the subject matter, as you have mentioned in today's presentation. Uh, you have mentioned the last names of my colleagues from Kiev Mohila Academy. The Ukrainian language department, uh, of course, during the Russia-Ukraine war, say about in 2017-2018, we even had a small conflict because the department uh, was really good uh, at uh, teaching our students who would major in economy, marketing, etc., management during the first, second quarter, and something will happen to them during the year three and four because colleagues kept hearing that our students would switch to Russian. And uh, they blamed me. They said that probably your teachers at your department are using Russian as the language of instruction, which is impossible. But I decided to look into the situation. And what did I find out yet once again? Basically, kind of from the students uh, during the second and third year starts uh, uh, doing part time jobs. So basically, they start joining with various businesses and organizations. And this is when they become Russified, even though they used to speak Ukrainian and enrolled into Kiev Mohila Academy. And they were conscious and they were consciously using Ukrainian. Yes, yeah, sadly, Ukrainian business used to, and hopefully now does not do it that much, but they used to speak Russian. And this was a very serious challenge. And I talked to different business people and I told them what we lack, uh, starting with terminology, for example, marketing terminology, other terminology that we lack up to the dictionaries uh, for example do we need ukrainian language uh, vocabularies and dictionaries for businesses etc and other training opportunities for businesses uh, 
So what is my question? My question is, can there be some additional recipes, maybe methods, uh, maybe joint research we could do in our efforts because last year I started studying. You know, I'm working at the crossing, at the intersection of culture and economy. So now I'm looking into the corporate cultural responsibility as an element of company branding. About what companies can do in terms of Ukrainian identity in advertisement and uh, brand building. So can their method of this language biographies or something else, what can be used by businesses now? What can become the, so to say, the driving force to make business Ukrainian speaking. Well, the thing is that the method of uh, language biographies is a research method rather than a tool to introduce something practically. But what is the use of it? To develop, to understand uh, what needs to be done for the situation to change, to become irreversible, because sociologists say that now there are also many people who are reacting in an impulsive way. It doesn't mean that what people say will actually be transformed into behavior for somebody. Yes, for somebody, no, because somebody can go back to how they used to be before. So to know what to do, you have to know all of the background. And the background is as follows, that the language environment was becoming more and more Russian speaking in the course of all 30 years of Ukraine's independence, uh, despite uh, the uh, law and language, etc. Why was it so? Because there were very stable language environments, Russian language environment. And basically to understand what level did happen did it start with the kindergarten then you have uh, to change it in preschool education so that the educators would be responsible to or should be done at the level of schools or high education institutions because we do not know what the current context is we won't be able to impact it so I think that this shows the value of language biographies because we finally can talk about the conflict which we turned a blind eye to. Thank you so much. That's how I see it. I do agree with you. Even the law on ads, that ads should be Ukrainian language, was adopted only in 2003. And... Uh, even though it was adopted and was passed, it was not implemented immediately. So for 12 years, nobody really was even thinking about the fact that we do have our own state language. Thank you so much. And I hope that having united our efforts, we'll be able to do something with this to change the situation. Yes. So that people use our state language in a conscious way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oksana, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon once again to everyone. Oksana, I have the following question to you. I teach basics of uh, historical education, and I'm very interested uh, in your uh, topic uh, and what is happening, not only in schools, but also with Ukrainian-speaking people. And my question is, could you please recommend some literature or researchers uh, who focused or wrote something about language in didactics? Do you know any researchers like that? Well, there are research uh, by her son, linguist about terminology of didactics and it mentions linguistics terminology and probably it also mentions other uh, humanitarian domains if we're talking about practical 
errors and how to rectify them. There is anti sorzik by Mr. Benska, a well-known linguist, and it basically mentions how people usually say something, make which mistake they make, and how you should use something in accordance with the literary language. It came out back in the 90s, and it transformed a lot. Many people relied on this book, and uh, it was republished, but yes, uh, you can look at this one too, but if we want to dive deeper, the dictionaries, uh, and you can find answers to any questions in the dictionaries, and a dictionary of Ukrainian language with, that consists of 11 volumes. Uh, that's, you know, the first thing that crosses my mind. Uh, uh, what, what what is the last name of uh, uh, the researcher from her son? I'm, I don't want... To... How about I contact you later on Telegram so that uh, I don't uh, give you the wrong last name? I don't want to make any mistakes. And I'll definitely get back to you regarding this. Thank you so much. Are there any more questions, colleagues? No questions? Then may I, Oksana, you have mentioned your research, your book, uh, Res, I think it was published back in 2019. Yes, yes, correct. And I wanted to, to ask, uh, how did the language situation change in school education since your research was carried out and published and after the large-scale invasion? What are the trends? What trends do you see? Well, basically, I touched upon that during my presentation. It did change. The uh, legal frame changed because previously there were no clear pieces of legislation regarding the state language in education facilities. Now we do have it. There is Article 21 of the language of the language law. There is an entire article dedicated to how you should use language in education domain. Um, and another thing is. Uh, not teaching Russian, uh, not reading our Russian classics at schools. It seems to be a formality, but in fact, very few people know that many of this Russian literature classics uh, that was taught at schools during the world literature, children read it in Russian. The motivation could have been different. Children simply know this language, that's why they can read it. Uh, why can you not read it? And originally, if you know the language. And this uh, formality changed. Uh, how much is that accompanied by the qualitative change? It's too early to say. You have to carry out some research that hasn't been carried out yet. But uh, Clearly, we can see that the change will happen. And on the other hand, there also are change in the overall language situation. All the trends uh, that I tried to briefly outline do impact uh, the language behavior of parents, children. And this also, but in terms of the quality, it's Unfortunately, it's early to say because we need to carry out a research that we could compare to 2017, 2006, that was carried out by our colleagues from the Kiev Mohil Academy. Then you can compare the results and reach some conclusions uh, based on the numbers because now we can only see the trends, and these are basically observations. Thank you so much, Oksana. Thank you for your question. Alex? Our time is almost up. Two seminars flew by. Extremely interesting presentations. Thank you for such relevant, substantial research, for such deep thoughts. And thank you for inducing us to also think about it. Once again, I would like to thank all those who joined us today. 
did our seminars today. I especially would like to thank our participants, our presenters. Uh, we wish them every success in their future research. And I would like to say that our next seminars will happen on Thursday. And we have two presentations on Thursday. By Vitaly Chernaivanenko about Jewish motives in Philately. And Vladimir Vahidov will speak about evacuation from the temporarily occupied territories. I hope that you will join us for those presentations on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for everything. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Sir. Thank you so much. Glory to the heroes. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.